All right, so final video. Uh, here we'll be teaching you about the instrument tie. Now this is what you're going to be doing generally if you're kind of starting off or finishing a, a running baseball stitch um, or something similar. Any kind of running stitch you're usually going to anchor in the end of an incision uh, using an instrument tie. So this is going to be a very, very popular one. You're going to use it a lot. So what you're going to be doing, uh, you're going to have a length of suture in one hand. Uh, suture is definitely the best to use to learn this one um, just because this stuff is just way too thick to kind of make it easy. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna actually use suture for this one, and you're gonna use your instrument in the other hand, uh, in your dominant hand. I'm a righty, so I'll use it in my right hand. And uh, always, when you're using an instrument that has kind of holes for your fingers, always use your thumb and your ring finger. Never use your middle finger. Uh, you'll get called out on that on the wards a lot um, if you do it. So always use your your ring finger, just because it's easier to you can control the tip. You can kind of have a better grip on it like this. It's just better overall. So that's what you're gonna want to do. So you're gonna have your instrument in your dominant hand, thumb and ring finger, and you're gonna have the suture in your other. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, if we were actually using pigskin or something similar, or if, you know, we're stitching up a human body, what you'd usually do is, um, from a righty's perspective, I would anchor it in the, the farthest side of, this, of the incision that I'm trying to stitch up. Uh, and what I would do is, if there was a needle on this, I would plunge it into the skin, I would push it across the, the wound, and I would pull it up from the other side, and I would basically just keep pulling it until I had this tiny little... Uh, this little tiny tail sticking up out of the skin. Now, because it's not anchored in actual skin, I'm going to leave it a little long just because it's easier to manipulate, but you'll get the idea anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold the, uh, the, suit, the, uh, the, the long end of the suture in my left hand. I'm going to have my empty needle drivers in the right hand. And what I'm going to do for the first one is I'm actually going to loop it over the, the needle drivers twice. So I'm going to go from left to the side, from, from the side that it's on to the side of the small, the short end. And I'm going to loop over the top of the needle drivers, and then I'm just going to finish the loop. And for the first one, I'm actually going to do that twice. So you'll see there's two loops on the end of that. And then I'm going to use the, uh, the tips to grab the very end of that suture. And you, the reason you want the very end of it is because if you, if you grab it too close, you'll leave this tail that's sticking on the other side, and it gets all messy. Um, you don't want to do that. So uh, you just want to grab that, that short end. And then instead of pulling everything through, what you want to do is essentially just pull the loops off the tip of the of the needle drivers. And for this first one, again, you're going to have to cross your hands to make it lay nice and flat. If you can see that, it lays nice and flat. If I do it the other way, it gets all twisted up. So I'm going to lay it nice and flat by crossing my hands, and now the short end should be on the other side. Okay, so you always want to have the, the short end flipping back and forth. So the short end is now on the left, and so my needle driver is going to start on the left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the exact opposite. I'm going to bring the, the long tail, the long free tail with my hand over the top to the left and finish the loop. I'm going to grab the tip of the suture with my needle drivers and then I'm going to pull the loop off and then my hands should go back to where they were because we're always going to pull the short end to the opposite side. So it should always be again bouncing back and forth. So again, start off, notice I'm only doing one loop over the top grab the tip and so this time I'll grab fairly long tail and what you'll notice is that it actually it leaves a long tail uh, kind of hanging out on the other side of the knot so what I have to do is just like tug that through and if you tie it too tight it's going to be really difficult so that's that's a pain in the ass so that's why you always want to grab the very tip if you can and then so now we've switched the short end to the other side and what we want to do is we want to loop over the top go in the opposite direction grab the tip of the short end and pull it through and again that's why you want to keep this relatively short because otherwise it's a pain in the butt so now if this were at the end what I would do is I would just kind of do my running baseball stitch over the top a bunch of times okay and then if I was gonna tie this at the other end of the of the stitch I would do it one more time through but I would leave this a bit long okay so I'm actually gonna leave a little a little bit of the loop out here and I'm going to use this as my long end so I'm going to loop that twice I'm going to grab that kind of loop that I left I'm going to pull the entire loop through okay so now I have this little double stranded loop over here alright and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
put a couple of instrument tie knots in there and I should be left with a loop on one side of the knot and a long tail on the other and that's anchored nice and tight on both ends of the incision and then you just uh, you'd snip your long ends here here and the double one here and that's it so that's your instrument tie and you just learned all the major knots in surgery so get out there and save some lives